Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Z Studios, on how we can resolve an issue where adding subdivisions to a cube is causing it to give us some unexpected results. So here I just have a simple cube here. So I'm going to select this and let's come into the inputs here to the poly cube node. Now if I were to add in some subdivisions, say let's go ahead and add in something into the height, we can see that it's kind of giving a weird result. And this is only going to get worse if I continue to add in subdivisions. We can see it's uh, really giving us some very unexpected results when we're doing a simple operation like adding in subdivisions. So why is this occurring? Well, the reason why this is actually occurring, I'm going to go ahead and undo this a little bit. Let's take a look at how this cube is made up. So if I were to come into my display here, into polygons, component IDs, and turn on vertices, this is going to show us the component IDs for these, these vertices that make up this cube. So we can see that there are actually eight vertices that make up this cube from zero to seven. Now, um, if we take a look at how this cube is actually built, uh, if we, let's actually come in and I'm going to come into a split view here so we can see this and then come into my hypergraph down here on the bottom. Okay, so uh, we can see that we have uh, eight components here, but then uh, let's take a look at the actual nodes that are building this cube. So once we understand better how this cube is built, uh, we'll get a better idea of why this uh, unexpected result is actually occurring. So we'll see this here a little bit better here in a little bit. Um, but if we notice, we have the poly cube node, and that's the same node that we can find here in the channel box in order to adjust things like the subdivisions. And that's actually plugged in to the shape node. Now, the shape node is what's going to handle the actual shape here. So what's happening is if we have our components, and if we were to actually adjust the position of these components, and then come back and try to add in subdivisions using this polycube node here, when this it, since this is plugged into the shape, it's going to give us unexpected results. So if we come in and let's go ahead and add in some more subdivisions here just to kind of give us this, uh, we can see that we actually have more uh, vertices due to the increased number of subdivisions. So basically what's happening is uh, we have our cube here. So we have the cube shape. And what we did is we modified the cube shape, but then we went back and modified this uh, poly cube node in order to add in some subdivisions. So this is propagating through and then actually creating the shape. But then when it gets to this, it says, uh, Maya says, hey, you went ahead and actually manually modified some of these components, but now I have uh, more components given to me from this poly cube node, and it's not really sure what to do with those extra components. And so that's what's giving us that unexpected result. Now we can really see this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. There's one more example here and uh, let's go ahead and create a fresh cube. Now, if I were to come in and modify the subdivisions for this cube in the poly cube node, we can see that I'm able to come in and very quickly come in and add some subdivisions without having any issue. Now, I can even come in and scale this. Let's say if I wanted to uh, come to my scale tool and scale this up a little bit and then come back in and add more subdivisions. I'm just uh, selecting this with my left mouse button and then middle click and dragging here in the viewport in order to add in some subdivisions. So we can see we're not, not having an issue if we actually scale using the cube node because Maya knows how to handle that. But if we come in and were to select the components, so I'm gonna come in and select all of the vertices here in the shape node and if I come into my scale tool now, let's just scale this down. Uh, it's all being scaled uniformly. But now if I come back to my poly cube node that's plugged into my shape node and try to adjust these subdivisions, take a look at what happens. We can see once again, we're getting these really unexpected results because we manually went in and modified some of the components. 
So anytime that we're dealing with, uh, or if we want to add in some subdivisions, let's go ahead and delete that and come back into our perspective view. Uh, create another cube here. And this works for pretty much any of the other primitive uh, polygon primitives as well. Uh, if we're working with any of these, we may have the ability to adjust the subdivisions. Now, if we want to actually bump up the subdivisions, we'll want to do that before we make any modifications to the components. So I could come in and, as I mentioned before, I can scale this however I want using the scale tool. Notice I'm not modifying the components. And I can come in and very easily come in and add some subdivisions without any issue. Uh, but we're not going to want to adjust any of the components and then go back and make adjustments to this polycube node within the inputs here because that's going to give us the unexpected results. So uh, let's just take a look at one more thing here. So let's say that we did come in and I already went ahead and adjusted some of these vertices here in order to adjust the components. So we know based off what we've seen so far, if I were to try to adjust these subdivisions, that's going to cause an issue. So how can I add in some subdivisions after I've already adjusted the components? Well, we're not going to want to use this polycube node, but there's actually a tool that we can use in order to do that. So let's come into our polygons menu set, go to edit mesh, and we'll use the insert edge loop tool. So with this, we can simply come in and left click and I am just have my left mouse button held down here so I can click and drag in order to position this. We can see we're able to add in these uh, subdivisions wherever we may want them after I've gone in and adjusted some of the components. So that's a look at why adding subdivisions after modifying the components can cause issues as well as a look at how we can work around this by using the insert edge loop tool. Now, if you want to learn some more great modeling tips, check out the Introduction to Modeling in Maya 2012.